a bit of, bit of fish yep. and stuff in. Uh, what is next after that process? Yeah, so well, where are we at now? So we've come to the end of the short block line, so the engine internals are kind of done now. Camshafts yeah. in, crankshafts in, pistons are in. At the, this point here, we've just fitted the oil pan. Uh, uh, and the engine's kind of, barring the cylinder head, the engine's kind of sealed up. Um, so what we've got at the end of the short block line is we've got an end of line vision system. So what that does is it checks you know, various components of where they should be, things are in the right orientation, things are in the right position and we haven't missed anything off. Um, so there's a, there's a series of cameras inside here uh, hooked up to, to a computer system. So when the engine comes in it reads the serial number, uh, it goes off to the, the IT system which says you know, what, what should I be, what should I have fitted. Yeah, it knows all what that, spec it's looking yeah, for. All that information comes down. Uh, and we basically d take a load of images and we compare them uh, to a load of saved good images in the system uh, and see what the differences are. And if we get any differences, the engines are rejected, they come into here, uh, the information's presented on the screen behind you, tells the operator what's, what's physically wrong with yeah. it, and the operator will go through a repair process and, and get the engine back right. into builders. So that's good side over problem. there. That's good side. Bad side over Bad here. Side here. Yeah. Yeah. And do you actually get many that come this way? Or um, is it we do, we do, and, and sometimes it's you know it's due to the uh, the complexity of the products that we build. So every every engine could be different. Uh, so we do we do find that, that sometimes we do you know fit some of the externals. It's it's more to do with alignment. So we might not have quite aligned something properly. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's due to the surface finish on the parts has changed. So the vision system detects it and thinks it's not there when it is there. So right. we do get we do get a lot of failures. Oh, yeah. But um, so a lot of it's kind of. Yeah. something and nothing almost. a lot of it's something yeah. and nothing but it does you know it gives us protection for the customer that on the off chance we do get something yeah. wrong we, we know we've got a system there that should capture it so and when, will you have a number of these vision systems dotted yes throughout? we do yeah so this is the first one we've got we've actually got one at the end of the long block process uh, we've got slightly different ver versions of it on pre-paint um, so before we go into the uh, into the paint booths further down the process uh, and that makes sure the engine's masked properly before we paint it. Yeah, that's um, good. Yeah. <laughs> Especially so we, when you're dealing with an it engine. Is, isn't it? it is, yeah. Um, and we also have sort of camera systems. Uh, some of them are on cobots, some of them are sensors mounted on the line, so they're not as big as this. And they're looking for individual components to make sure they're fitted and, uh, and we haven't missed something yeah. off um, or something's orientated correctly. So we do use vision a lot. Um, it's one of the things that we, we uh, have really put into to focus on our quality right. um, of our components, and, and, it, and it does help us uh, bring our bring our defects down. So. Perfect. And uh, just walking around, I mean, how long is the actual you know the actual production line? It, yeah, it's quite long. So altogether, there's about 200 workstations. Um, we can have a, at any given time. We can have about 300 engines that are actually in process. Uh, in terms of physical distance. You're probably talking, I've never actually measured it, but you're probably talking somewhere in the region of about a kilometre all told. If you, yeah. if you unwound it all and yeah. laid it out in a line, it'd probably be around, around a kilometre right. um, or so, maybe a little bit more. Got you. Yeah. And how many, because obviously you've got, God knows how many different customers, they all want different specs, yep. they've all got yep. different machines. Yep. How many different build specs will you have? Uh, so we currently have about 3,000 different customer shop orders, so each right. one of those is a, is a different build spec. Um, so that's based on that you know we've got the the four the four cylinder product we've got the six cylinder uh, B series product and we've got the the nine liter L series and C series product so yeah. that then goes down into about three thousand different products um, so it, it's pretty complex yeah um, it's pretty complex but it's it's what we do it's what we do well, uh, we do it. a good job of it so. yeah and that's why you have, each one has a serial number and exactly yeah all the stations know yeah. what's going on and it's why all the technologies there in the background is to is to manage that variation yeah um, so it takes a lot of setup. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's well, it's, well, it's working. It's good. It's, yeah, it is exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's it. Grand, right? We should move Brilliant. on, eh? Yeah. So, Andrew, we we continue in the build process. Yeah. It looks like we've moved up to the top of the engine now. We're uh, looking ahead here. So. Yeah, we have. So um, we're now onto the cylinder head sub assembly line. Um, so what we do, we bring a lot of the heads in, partly subassembled, so they have they have the valves already in them, yeah. uh, and that's done at the supplier. So whether that be in, in Brazil or the US, uh, depends where the head comes from. De uh, it, it depends different products. The heads come from different locations. Yeah. Um, but what we what we do around here, we put the air intakes on, we put the fuel tubes, uh, fuel manifolds, things like that on. They, they go through this process here. Uh, we put the injectors in. Uh, we basically get the head ready to be lifted onto the to the engine. Now the engine's the right way up on the long block line. Yeah. Um, 
Presumably, I mean, with the head, especially when it comes to valves and things like that, we're dealing with sort of fine tolerances at we this are, point. We are very fine tolerances. Uh, cleanliness is important at this point as well. Um, so we're, particularly we're putting the injectors in, we have to be careful how we handle the injectors. Obviously, any debris that gets in the injectors can block them, so um, we, we have special handling uh, facilities for the, for the injectors as well. Um, and we'll look next, we'll look at the, the valve lash uh, robot and look at how we set the valve tolerances. We can go there next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they are very, very fine tolerances um, with it within the head. So, in the cage behind, is this will be valve lash set up? Yes, it? it is. That's exactly right. So, we basically we've got a we've got a spindle, uh, an Atlas Copco spindle on the end of a robot. Uh, the way it works, it, it basically tightens the adjustment screw all the way down. Yeah. And then it backs it off a certain number of degrees um, based on the thread pitch, and that should give you the, the gap. And then it sets the locking up on top of that. So it's quite a clever process. It, um, Cummins developed it with Atlas Copco, uh, and we've deployed it all over the world at all the different different sites that we have. So it gives us a reliable, automatic uh, method of, of setting the uh, the valve clearances. Right. So this is certainly one sort of situation where it's better to take out that yes. risk of human error. Yeah. And what we still do is we still overcheck manually. Yeah. Um, so the the valve train itself is very complex. Um, so although we set the valve automatically, what we do is we have an, an, an overcheck uh, person in place to make sure nothing's moved during the assembly process. Right. Obviously if something moves, we could potentially then set the clearance uh, incorrectly, so we, we recheck all of that with, a, with a, uh, a person to make sure nothing's moved during the process. Right. Um, and what sort of tolerances are we talking in here? I mean, you t you're talking like sort of down to 0.2 of a millimetre, so it, 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 it can go. So it's very, very, very tight tolerances. Uh, and then we've got to be, you know, we've got to be accurate in it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And you mentioned before, this is, you know, this is a machine that you develop with Atlas Copco. Yeah, that's right. Do you find yourselves developing a lot of machines, a lot of processes yeah. with, you know, other parties? Yeah, we do. So, I mean, obviously, we use a lot of standard components, you know, in the background here, we've Fanuc robots and, and generally most of the robots we use around the site are Fanuc with, with yeah. the exception of the paint robots. Um, all our DC tooling is Atlas Copco and our PLC controls are Siemens. Um, so we, we're pretty standard in that but then it's the actual application of how we use those. Uh, it's very very bespoke to, to not necessarily Darlington but Cummins yeah. generally speaking. Um, one of the big things that we have and we touched on it earlier was that variation uh, in, the, in the amount of products that we build at Darlington. Um, that gives us a big challenge in automating a lot of these processes. Uh, so we partner with automation providers. We've got one one locally um, that does a very nice job for us. Um, and we develop these systems in conjunction our engineers and their engineers. And um, yeah, we, we do a pretty good job with it. I mean, what looks like Turbo World? It is Turbo yeah. World. Um, yes, yeah, so this is our this is our Turbo sub assembly area. Um, so this is this is part of what's known as the uh, EMS line, which stands for Electric Monorail System. Um, so this is the overhead conveyor you can see in the background. So it's an electrified overhead conveyor. It allows the operators to raise and lower the height of the engine to control position as they're fitting parts. By this point. There's quite a lot of variation, so yeah. some turbos are up here, some are down here, so it's important for the operators to be able to adjust the height. Uh, and as part of this, we've got turbo sub-assembly. Um, so the turbos, again, you know, these mostly come in supplied. Um, they come from, some of them come from Huddersfield, some of them come from Charleston, some of them come from yeah. China. Um, but again, four corners of the globe, yeah. really. Um, well, wherever they come from, will they be? Cummins on yes, company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cummins, so Cummins whole set, yeah, yeah. for example, so, so that's a Cummins company. They're all yeah. Cummins turbochargers, yeah. yeah. So um, so these come in. Um, There's a variation as well. <laughs> again, significant variation. They come in, you know, mostly assembled. It's an assembled turbocharger, it, yeah. it, it runs. Um, but there's, there's still an, an amount of sub-assembly that needs to be done, and it's a lot of it's things like oil feed pipes and stuff like yeah. that, wiring harnesses, things that are bespoke to the customer and bespoke to where it's going to sit That's on it. the engine. Because they can only be standard so far, can't exactly. they? Yeah. And then it has to fit yeah. and match. And, and when you've got 3,000 different customer orders, um, <laughs> there is quite a lot of variation. So, yeah. so these, uh, they're sub-assembled on these, on these benches and jigs behind them. You can see a variety of, uh, of electronic tool in there. Again, we've got our, uh, our MES system that, that tells the operators what to fit. Uh, and then after that, we load them onto this, uh, this little feed conveyor here, and that supplies them down to the production line where they're, they're matched up with the, the correct engine. Yeah. And it must be tricky, because you've got all these sub-assemblies going on, yep. as we've seen with pistons and whatever, and yep. crankshafts and all sorts of bits going on. Getting that timing right 
from the sub assemblies coming to the main line yeah, yeah. to the actual you know the main engine itself it must be one it, hell of a challenge it, it is challenging and, and what we do is we actually trigger these kits from earlier in the process so we we have what we call like a sequencing event so uh, turbos will be triggered probably from the start of long block uh, we have some of the long block components are triggered from short block and that allows us to get the right number of turbos in build right. so we're not overwhelmed with turbos or yeah, don't don't have, of them, do yeah, or don't yeah. have quite enough to, to keep the production line right. going so um, you know it, it is a bit of a, uh, a, a process to manage right. so as that engine's going down the line yeah. it'll get to a point where it's like right start building me a turbo now yes, exactly. or get me a turbo ready and, and the label or a head out, ready or whatever yeah exactly and the label comes out the printer um, the operator, yeah. the, the turbo will be here ready. Uh, it's also already told the warehouse, bring that turbo yeah. through, uh, and the operator can scan it into the MES system, build yeah. it up, and then drop it onto it's the. Bit of a kitchen style, isn't it? You get it your is. order coming in. And yeah, yeah, it is. It's exactly <laughs> like that. So, um, you know, the. the they're good processes. These are the kind of processes that happen in the background that really help us uh, stay efficient and stay ahead of the game.